Hello, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here at loverugbyleague.com. Sponsored by Betfred, I'm James Gordon, joined as ever by Drew Derbyshire. Um, we've got quite a bit to get through, Drew. Um, so yeah, if you want to, if you want to get involved, please do leave some comments. We'll get Drew to read them out, and if he wants to talk about anything, let's know. Let's start with the news that's been announced this morning. Um, fans can return to games at the end of this month, September 30th. Four games: uh, Wigan against St Helens, Casford against Hull, Huddersfield against Hull KR, and Leeds against Catalan. Um, attendances will be capped at 1,000, there will be home fans only, um, obviously each individual club will uh, announce the procedure for how they're going to allocate the 1,000 people. Unfortunately Salford's game against Warrington is not part of um, this pilot of games due to the uh, high coronavirus rates um, around that area. Um, Drew, a positive, positive move forward but probably not quite the sort of levels that maybe Super League and fans would have hoped for? Yeah, it's, it's a positive note. Um, I'm not sure how the the ballots will work for, for fans, um, so that'll be interesting to see how it works. Um, but we're, we're, it looks like we're getting back to to normal, uh, it, well, the new normal, should I say. Um, it's, a, it's a positive, isn't it? But it's, it's not going to make the biggest difference, um, but at least there will be some form of atmosphere uh, in each ground. It'll be interesting to see how it all pans out because of course <coughs> that you know that's the, there's games the following week uh, which are at, which are still unconfirmed as to where they're gonna be, when they're gonna be, whether they have fans. So it'd be interesting to see whether how fast things move mm. from after that game, so uh, from after that date, so it's a Wednesday night. If that is a success it'd be interesting to see whether the games the following week will all be opened up to a thousand people. There's a little bit of uncertainty to be fair at the moment over coronavirus because there's a bit of there's been an increase in cases we've seen in the northeast I think are going in lockdown. I mean we're in Warrington, there's talk of Warrington going into um, a bit of a local lockdown as well. Um, so is there a little bit of perhaps being cautious because it might be that they come back for one game and then lockdown means that you can't so come back for any more. I know, uh, but I think we, we've got to try and take this step, haven't we? We, we can't just pull it behind closed doors for the rest of the year. Uh, we've got to try and get fans back uh, into the games and into the grounds. Um, I think we, it, we've got to take this step, whether you agree with it or whether you disagree with it. I think we, we need to take this step at some point. Um, and obviously it's a couple of weeks yet uh, until it's the September the 30th. So uh, we've got a couple of weeks to go and, and a couple more weeks to get it right uh, and on the club front as well it, it seems as though the clubs are taking more of a, a stance with the players now uh, there's not as many players testing positive for, for coronavirus so it looks as though everything's moving forward uh, slowly but surely um, which can only be a good thing at the end of the day. I did a, there was a piece, the editor's column on, my editor's column on Monday was about um, games without fans and it has started to get a little bit um, a bit strange without, well it was always strange without fans but I think obviously we as journalists are privileged to be able to go to the games at the moment after you know you do one or two and then the novelty of there not being fans there, well not that it was a novelty anyway but you sort of, you were just focused on the rugby whereas now you are noticing, you know very much noticeable that, that fans aren't there. I think I put a comment there was a, there was a lady from Huddersfield in the director's box last week who was, it was the first time I've been at a game where I've heard shouts from fans, you know, yeah. oh, get them off side, get them on side, or oh, come on ref, you know, I was that was the first time since Super League restarted it really. Yeah. I've heard that from a crowd. It was just a you know a lady in the Huddersfield uh, directors box doing that. We've, um, we've got a couple of comments coming through. Uh, Tina says it, it would be interesting to, to see how the selection will be made when there are five thousand or so season ticket pass holders at some clubs. In my opinion. Uh, I was I was saying it in the office this morning. In my opinion, if it was up to me, I'd probably go with the so so I give priority to the people who have season tickets the longest. So, for example, say well, it's whether they really have that data though, because they might not necessarily. Uh, well, I, th I think most clubs don't have the data. Um, say at Wigan, for example, they play Saint Helens in in that first game back. So, um, I'd say if you if you've had a season ticket. 40 or more years then they should have priority for that game because 
at the end of the day, there's, there's, not, there's not many ways of... We don't know actually, to be fair, we don't actually selection. know whether all thousand will be made available because of course the sponsor commitments and, and, and commercial partner commitments that may impact on that. My, I think what will probably happen, and, and Leeds have just put something out to think about this, is that you declare an interest for buying a ticket and then a bit like they do with football matches, I suppose, you declare an interest, if you're a season ticket holder, I should say, you declare an interest in buying a ticket and ultimately they, if, if 3,000 people declare an interest, they've got to do a, a ballot and pick 1,000 or whatever the number is um, mm -hmm. out of that. I think that's probably going to be the, the, way, the way it works. I suppose, I suppose if it's going to be limited over a few weeks, I suppose you could say, right, okay, you know, it, say if we can get another home game in a couple of weeks, yeah. it's a thousand that anyone who came to the first game can't go to the second one almost. Um, we'll, we'll be back to this. Positive news, just what precautions will be taken, for example, taking people's temperature on arrival and anyone with coughs, etc., will be turned away. Um, yeah, well, we're, I mean, it's slightly different it, for press. Obviously, the, the situation for attending games for press at the moment is um, we get a questionnaire on the obviously after we've applied, we get a questionnaire in the morning of the game. So I'm going to, to Huddersfield after this. Um, I have a questionnaire this morning that you have to fill in before half past nine, which is effectively a, a COVID screening questionnaire. Then when you get to the ground, um, before you enter, you, you, your temperature's taken, obviously you've got to wear a mask. Um, obviously the press, we're all kept, you know, we don't go near players or coaches, we're all kept in our own little um, environment. I would imagine that the temperature, whether it be every single person, I'm not too sure, but I would imagine that you'll find at those games that they'll have um, someone with a, a temperature gun um, just to just to track track your temperature. Uh, Steve Omar says, crazy decision letting crowds in as more places are going into lockdown. Yeah, I mean, he's getting to that point. I think I'm a bit, you know, I would also argue is does, make, does allowing a thousand, I mean, I suppose you've got to get to that You've got to build up to that point. I, I always think, is there much point in allowing a thousand in? For you know, for the reasons that Super League needs them, I should say. So, you know, ultimately Super League are trying to do this from a commercial point of view, but mm. is have does a thousand having a thousand people in actually make that much difference? Especially if they're all season ticket holders. Because that's what I mean, are they gonna be selling tickets? Are they gonna do you know what I mean? That's yeah. I think that's you know, in theory, if you if you're opening up to a thousand yeah, okay, you've got all these people coming, but are, are any of those thousand people actually going to be giving you any money? And then I think it's going to, you know, if you if they aren't and it's contributing to the season ticket, then it's going to add a bit of a layer of confusion for refunding and stuff because it's like, well, those season ticket holders have been that game, whereas we, I've got season ticket and I haven't been that game. So it'll be interesting to see how clubs um, work it out. Um, let's move on from that then. Um, probably the biggest... One of the biggest stories this week is the departure of Simon Wolford, uh, Huddersfield coach. Um, it's been sort of brewing for a couple of weeks. It was announced on Monday that he was leaving at the end of the season, and then it was announced on Tuesday, Wednesday, um, that he was leaving with immediate effect. So Huddersfield playing Wakefield this afternoon. Luke Robinson will take charge. There's a general feeling, certainly amongst the press, that Wolford did, did depart. He's quite surprising because we feel that Wolford... He's been in charge for just over two years. He's done a decent job. Um, he's sort of reshaped the squad um, over that period. They were doing really well before lockdown, and they've been really unlucky since the restart. They've lost, yeah, they've lost five out of five, but they've lost three games by one point. Yeah. If they'd have won those three games, which they had every chance of doing uh, in all three, it'd be a, a very different picture. Um, are you surprised that, that Huddersfield have decided that I understand this other field working off from a new contract, but I've also heard that he wanted to go home. But yeah. it seems like if he if they asked him to stay, it feels like he yeah. would stay. Um, well, yeah, it's it's hard to read between the lines because in the, in the first press release that we got, I think it might have been on Tuesday, where it said he's going to leave at the end of the season. It almost seemed as though it was his choice to to leave the club, um, whereas. In the in the second press release that we got on Thursday, saying he's he's he's, he's gone immediately and he's left the club with immediate effect. Um, in the in the quotes, Huddersfield's managing director Richard Thewlis said something along the lines of um, 
once it was clear that he didn't want to extend his time with the club, um, we, we came to this decision. So um, I, I don't know if, he's, if, it, if, it, if it's a mutual agreement and they just agreed to, to go separate ways earlier than, than expected. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure, but I'm quite sad to see him go. Uh, I think he was doing a, a very good job with Huddersfield with the, with the budget they've got because it's not one of the biggest budgets in Super League, we all know that. But what I also like, he's brought up through a lot of youth uh, and he's not afraid to play youngsters. Whereas we've seen with overseas coaches at Super League clubs in the past, they have been scared to bring through the youngsters at clubs uh, and, they, and they've looked to the NRL for, for for players rather than bringing through the homegrown talent. But Wolf has not done that. He's, he's actually played a lot of youngsters at the Giants and he's brought through a lot of local talent as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm just sad to see him go because he's always being honest to the media, hasn't he? Yeah. He's always being honest in, in interviews. He's he's always tried to say it how it is. I think Huddersfield, for me, are one of them clubs that, like you say about overseas players, I think when Wolf had got there, there wasn't much manoeuvre on the salary cap. He was almost stuck with the squad that he had for a year, or certainly for the, I think he joined in the April, certainly for the rest of that season. And I think sometimes changing coaches regularly does cause you problems because if you're if you're maxed up to the salary cap, it's very difficult for if a new coach comes in and he doesn't fancy player X, Y, and Z. It's very difficult to, to move them on. And you have seen that a little bit with Huddersfield in, in recent years. Obviously, it'd be interesting to see. The, the I mean, we're in we're in a, we're in a strange situation at the moment, anyway. But it'd be interesting to see now that a new coach could in theory come in and maybe build his team for next season. Well, yeah, and Huddersfield almost signed Christmas Queen. What was it? Two weeks ago, yeah. last week, maybe. Well, it's that season. I sort of won. I wonder how much, you know, Huddersfield signed an agent Caesar. I wonder how much of that was down to Wolford, or you know, because that was quite an eye-catching signing at at that time. And you wonder how much of his arrival was to do with what well, he might not have had anything, had anything to do with him. But you know, you you wonder whether it's because Wolford, if Wolford goes and they say put. Luke Robinson in there, his seeds are still going to want to stay, maybe not with Luke Robinson because he's already had saved, they brought in somebody yeah. else. Um, so I'd be interested to see, we're doing a piece on looking at contenders, there's not loads of obvious, camp. well, there's not loads of potential coaches sat within the thumbs anymore, um, the majority of people that we've looked at are young, so Luke Robinson's obviously mm. a potential co- candidate, he's stepping in as interim, Chris Thorman, who some thought should have probably got the job before Wolford did. He's at work and at the moment, potential candidate. Um, but beyond, you know, beyond that, we were looking at maybe Brett Hodgson, former man of steel, former man of steel fullback. He's currently assistant at, at West Tigers. Um, uh, there's probably Kieran Hurtle. Is it? He was a witness. He's got. He went to Hull. He's more of a. I think he's he's in the background at Hull. Really, he's always been with yeah. the Huddersfield jobs in the past. Um, you've and you can also look at Richard Marshall as well, who's assistant coach at St Helens now. Mm-hmm. Is it time for him to step up and be, and be a head coach in Super League? Obviously, he's wanted a head coaching gig in Super League before, or, or is he? But then you think, well, why would you want to leave St Helens at this moment in time? They're, they're flying high. They're, they're aiming for Super League glory. They're aiming for the grand final again. He won the grand final with St Helens last year. Um, so there's not m- too many. Um, Do you, I mean, I mean, I mean the, the, the way that it's all happened, I mean, we don't, like I said, we don't know whose decision it was. I mean, the noise from Wolford in the press conferences was that he wanted to stay, but then I've heard, contrary to that, I think he's got, I think he's got three daughters or, or, or something like that. He all in Australia and maybe he wanted to go back, back to see them. Um, but you almost feel like if Huddersfield have got to this situation, surely they had a bit of an idea of who they wanted to get. I mean, I know even before they announced it, um, they've acknowledged that they've had a few people, you know, a few inquiries. Um, yeah, they've said they've, got, they've had expressions of interest from people over the head coaching role. Um, I think with the way it's been announced, and obviously there were rumours going on for a couple of weeks before this that he was set to leave Huddersfield at the end of the season. And I think Wolf had actually said in his press conference two or three weeks ago that uh, he was set to to go home at the end of the season, so uh, it's been in the pipeline for a while, so I, I, I would assume that the Giants have got someone in mind, um, but there's no clear standouts to us, is there? No. 
Uh, other news this week, David Fafita has uh, had clear the air uh, talks with Wakefield and is now willing to play with a, a GPS device, which is mightily good of him. So apparently he's going to be in contention for Wakefield. I don't think he's available he's not, today, he's, but no, he might not. be next week. Yeah. Wigan have signed Brad Singleton from Toronto. Um, a decent pickup for Wigan, with immediate effect as well, that one. So there yeah. is a little bit of salary cap room that's been added as part of the changes. So I, th- I think... Um, um, I think it's a decent signing from, from Wigan. I think he's, he's obviously at Leeds. I thought it was a, a, a great prop. Um, I think he struggled with injuries towards the end of his time at Leeds, um, but he was one of the best props in Super League uh, for a couple of seasons. Uh, I, I think it was between 2014, 2016, 2017. Um, he was he was a standout forward and he, he plays the Wigan way as well, where he, he just plays tough, he plays hard, he plays aggressive uh, through the middle. So uh, I think it'll fit him well to Wigan. Speaking style. of that, Ethan have had signed new deal as well. Um, York have signed Ryan Atkins, which is a decent pick up. They've also signed Time Nickow, the son of Tawera Nickow. Um, Atkins would pick up Championship, I suppose, he's at the end of his career. He's the fifth highest Super League try scorer of all time. And for a player that gets the amount of flack that he does, um, that's a, a pretty fair fair achievement. I think I think it'll go very well for York as well. Um, York have got there's some there's some age in that York team. They've signed plenty of experience. Yeah, yeah. They've got you know they have Kerman, Clarkson in the back row. Washbrook. Washbrook. There's, there's there's plenty of experience in that York team. So it'll be interesting how they go. Who are the halves? The York. <sighs> you put me on the spot now. Well, the, the Conor Robinson's left, hasn't he? Um, I'm sure they've signed a half. You should, you should have researched I'm it. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Before coming on, is Lucy going to find out? I'll find out. They've got a good um, side. Though. They signed Morgan Smith, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. One they from um, well, they've got a big you know, so, And Matty Marsh, well, to be fair, uh, Liam a, Salter's extended his stay. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of decent squads in the Championship, it's going to be interesting next season. Um, Warrington confirmed over the weekend, or rather, the player did, and then Warrington had to confirm after that. Luther Burrell um, has left Warrington, wants to go back to Rugby Union. Um, he had a bit of a whinge about lack of opportunities, but just because you show I mean, I could show up to Warrington training every day and, and stay afterwards and, and do a bit of extra work. It doesn't mean that I'm good enough to get a game, do you know what I mean? And I think that's what struck me about Burrell's comments in the mail. I think he's 32 now. 32 yeah, 32, yeah. Like that. I think... He just made that transition into rugby league. I know, I know he played rugby league as a kid growing up, but obviously he played he played all his career in rugby union professionally. I think crossing calls just at that stage of your career when you you've known rugby league for so long, I think it's it's a hard task. I, I think it's probably a good example that the two rugby codes are so different yeah. now that it takes an absolute superstar. You know, if you look at if you were to come up with a list of players that have actually converted and done both. It's very, you know, obviously Sonny Bill, absolute superstar, you know, Jason Jason Robinson. There's not many sort of, I'm not saying Burrell, uh, Burrell was never a superstar, yeah, he played for England, but, I mean, even look, you know, Sam Burgess, obviously the jury's a bit out on that one. He's probably the only superstar player that you can maybe think of in the in the past, however yeah. long. Um, so I think probably the days of players being able to convert, to switch codes and actually seamlessly fit in are probably gone. You know, you look at Burrell, really, some, if it, someone of his calibre should be able to slot in and play centre in Super League, in, you know, in theory. Well, clearly, it mm-hmm. doesn't work, it, the theory doesn't work in practice. So, um, that, it, it's, it's not worked in his favour this year, where, where obviously the Championship and League One's cancelled, so he can't even play rugby league well, games I mean, on the Red. Well, there was a bit of talk at the start of the season where he refused to do that as well. Um, um, all right. So and, the, uh, and obviously the reserves got cancelled earlier this year, yeah, so so, so the, only, the only way of him playing rugby league is for Warrington's first team, and obviously he couldn't get in. There was a few murmurs, obviously, allegedly, that, you know, he, I mean, and I think, I'm sure a few people asked him that, that, you know, does he want to go on Gio Reggie, but no, you know, that's not well, something I, 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 remember, I remember at um, Warrington's press day, I asked him, would you be open to playing reserve grade rugby to, to try and push your way into Warrington's team, and he was like, obviously... I don't really want to say yes because I'm a I've played for England at rugby union. It wasn't was arrogant mm-hmm. in the way he was saying it. He said, but he was like, I'm, I'm not obviously a, a rugby union Premiership player. But in many ways, the fact that he's played rugby union, you know, in many ways, 
the fact that he's played rugby union for England and Premiership rugby union is completely irrelevant, really, in my opinion. It's completely irrelevant whether he's played for England in rugby union because rugby league is different sports, so he in different competition. Um, so Burrell's gone, he's gone back to rugby union with the tail between his legs. Warrington, it won't really affect them too much because he was only due to come off on the salary cap when he's left anyway. There has been a little bit of a, a rumour going around Warrington that maybe Greg English may come over early, like say, like we've seen with Wigan there. There is a little bit of salary cap room that's being created as part of the, the, the COVID restrictions. So, you know, there is potential that Warrington could bring, they could have room to bring someone like Greg English over. Um, they, they did deny it at the start of July, um, but apparently he's keen to come over. So, be interested to see if there's any movement on that one. Um, two, two big topics to discuss, actually. Well, well, we'll discuss one of them and then we'll just have a quick look at the game. Squirrel grips. <laughs> um, so we had two. Tom Lani got eight games, so that's pretty much. Is that season over? Oh, he'd be back to no, back yeah, in. Depends yeah. how they do in the challenge cup. Tom Lani's being pegged for eight games. Abdul didn't get eight. Did Abdul get two. Two. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's different. Surely, if you tug that someone's knack is. Surely, it's the same whether you do it that way. Or no, no, I, I don't know how, how the addition, I don't know how the. The tribunal will discover Lyons eight games and Abdul's two games. I mean, I thought Lyons was I thought Lyons was pretty clear. That there's that's a, there's a big mean. difference, though, isn't there? Between there's, there's a six match difference between yeah, two yeah. two squirrel grips. And you can sort of see, obviously, there was a discussion. Makinson only got five games, but, but obviously his discipline record was a lot better than Lyons. It's also interesting to see Tony Smith's comments as well. Mm. Um, he wants a little bit of clarity over. The squirrel grip situation, and obviously what what deems to be a squirrel grip, because obviously when a player's going down and there's a there's a tackle, you put their arms around the legs. Mm, I, your, to me, the arms. Your team, hand come in contact with their privates. The, and the, that's the arms around. I think the I think for me the obvious ones are when obviously the arms go around the leg, but sometimes you do see an arm sort of going yeah. through the middle between someone's yeah. legs, and I think for me that I always think that when I see a tackle, I think you know is that necessary to do that? So. You know, maybe, but again, it's like sometimes things just come into fashion, don't yeah. they? I mean, you can't tell me that just all of a sudden three players have decided to do that and it's not been happening mm -hmm. before. I mean, who knows? Um, so, are you saying more squ squirrel grips throughout the season? I'm yeah. not, well, I mean, I just think it, it's, it's interesting that One ball there's a bit of a fat, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, remember when, um, remember when they had, there was a bit of a. Um, an outbreak of colliding with the referee, contact with the referee, wasn't it? Yeah. Where we just had a bit of a, a period where every other week, where every week someone were getting banned for making contact with the referee. And it was like, well, well what's happened in them four or five weeks that that's happened all of a sudden when it hasn't been happening happening before? I remember, because I remember, um, obviously, Bentham got done, didn't he, a, a big Chris game. Chris Chris and then I went, I was at, I remember being at Salford, it was Good Friday, I'm sure it was, Salford were playing Lee. And there was like two incidents there where, I'd seen like a player's touch the ref and the ref's put on reports and I'm thinking, surely this has been happening all the time and it's yeah. just being brushed off as oh sorry ref or whatever. And it just yeah, so maybe it's just one of those uh, situations. Um so yeah, I'll keep an eye out for them well keep an eye on your balls this weekend, I suppose, is the message. Um so Wakefield will just a super league game this afternoon, three o'clock. It's on our league, um so you can't watch it unless you've got a season ticket in Wakefield or Huddersfield. Um, so they'll both enjoy that match. Um, the Challenge Cup quarterfinals this week. Um, the draw, by the way, for the semi-finals is going to be on Saturday evening on BBC Two, BBC One, whatever, whatever the, BBC the game is on BBC Two. Um, so Catalan Salford is tomorrow night at six. Leeds versus Hull KR eight fifteen. Um, predictions Catalan. It's a shame for Catalan that they're not at home. But then I suppose, well, yeah, Catalan Salford, Catalan for me. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with Catalan. I think, I think they need to, to bounce back from last week's defeat to win. It, it'd be a real boost for Catalan, it has to be said, if they can do the Challenge Cup this year based on, you know, they deserve credit for mm -hmm. funding everything over. So I suppose you could say that out of any of the teams, they mm -hmm. perhaps deserve to, to maybe go all the way. It'd be interesting to see um, Callum Watkins again at Digital for Love as well in mm -hmm. centres. Yeah, um, of course, they're hoping that they'll get 20,000 at Wembley for the final. So if Catalan get there, you, you don't think they could sell 20,000 even if Catalan get there. 
Um, Leeds Old KR, yeah, I've been re- actually, I've been at both Old KR's games last two, two weeks and they've been brilliant against Wigan and, and St. Helens. Can they do it for a third straight week and beat beat Leeds, who a bit of adversity at Leeds at the moment, obviously had to stand down seven players last week, they're standing down four, I think, this week. Um, Leeds Old KR. I'm going to go, I'll, I'll back Old KR. Mm. I think... I think they all want to do well in the Challenge Cup. No, I mean, everyone wants to do well. But yeah, you are right. I suppose Tony Smith's come out and said, well, there's no relegation, there's no yeah. pressure. Whereas, obviously, in Challenge Cup, you know, it'd be interesting. No, no, no disrespect to all cow, they don't want to win Super League, are they? Well, no, but they've obviously. Well, no, exactly. Uh, but uh, it'd be interesting to see that, you know, obviously, there's been a bit of. The style of their play has been attributed to, uh, to there being no pressure. If they put pressure on themselves to beat Leeds to get to the Challenge Cup and finals, then. It'd be interesting to see how they deal with that well, pressure. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Ooh, I, I don't know, I'm on the fence with these OKR. Um, I'll go OKR just because I've enjoyed the last two months. <laughs> um, Saturday is a repeat of last year's final, Warrington against St Helens. Um, interesting on this because Warrington have won all their games um, since the restart, as are St Helens. Um, but Warrington... I, I don't want this to sound negative towards Warrington. Well, I don't mean it to be negative. Warrington have been really grinding out wins. You know, they've not necessarily been firing on all cylinders, but they've been getting results. It'd be interesting to see if they can apply that sort mm. of grit and the way they've been played against St Helens, who are still probably head and shoulders the best team in the comp. Yeah, I'm going to tip Saints just because I, th- I, ju- I just think they're better than everyone else in the competition right now. Mm. By some some distance, to be honest, I, th- I think they're the, the clear leaders for me, um, and, I, and I don't think I'll, I'll be backing against them anytime so you, soon. You, you think St. Helens Super League Challenge Cup double? Is that what you're going for? Um, oh, I think they'll win a, a trophy. Um, well, I'll, I think they'll win a trophy. Um, and then Hull versus Wigan Hull, of course, made the last eight by beating Casper last Char- week. Charlie um, Taylor says that without April, it's a hard task for Hull KR, which is a f- a very good yeah, point, but yeah, he's, yeah. He's a baller, isn't he? I, I, it'd be, like I say, it'd be, really, well. it'd be really interesting to see how Hull KR deal with a bit of pre- if they're putting the pressure on themselves that they want to do well in the cup. They've got that sort of release of having no pressure in the league wouldn't be, yeah. you know, a factor. Um, Hull, sorry, going back to Hull Wigan is the other game. Uh, Hull beat Cass last week. Um, still a bit Jekyll and Hyde. Hull, um, I think I, I can't see past Wigan. For, for that one. I mean, you're obviously going to say Wigan. Um, <laughs> final, final, uh, final point for the week, and I put this in the comments so people, I put this in the things, people have a have a chat. Um, and we haven't really debated it on the show a great deal, um, mainly because we haven't had a show for two weeks. Um, should Toronto continue in Super League in 2021? I think they should. Um, I think. This year has been very, very difficult. We couldn't, we couldn't foresee a global pandemic striking us uh, the way it has. I think they deserve another chance. I, re- I really do. And I can understand people who don't think they should have another chance in Super League, but considering the circumstances this year, and the prospective new owner sounds like he's very, very determined to right the wrongs at, at the Wolf Pack. Um, and I think it's it's a big step for Super League to take. It's a big decision. Um, but if, if it was up to me, um, I'd, I'd give them a second chance. Uh, my position on it is... Um, I, I, I had an interesting conversation last week um, about, about, the, about, the, about the crowd situation. So, obviously, the bottom line is, whether you believe the numbers or not, there's still been a... X thousand mm. number of people who've been watching rugby league in Toronto. Which <clears throat> I, my my thing is that rugby league needs two things: more fans and more players. Yeah, you'll say it needs more money and it needs more of this, but if you have more fans and more players, yeah, all the other stuff follows. Uh, and ultimately, Toronto have managed to attract you know crowd numbers that are higher than you know more than half of the Super League teams. They've never had a Super League game. Um, in Canada, so they still deserve that chance. I'm still a little bit, you know, the logistics and everything. I still, you know, I still ask questions mm. about the strategy, but in in many ways, that's not 
that's not for Toronto to decide. They're just one. They're mm. just one club. They have to be in it. The RFL said, yeah, they're in it. It's not up to them to decide what the wider strategy for the game is. All Toronto can be is the best club that they they can be. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with the you know the new owner saying, well, if you let us back in, I'll pay all the wages for this year because that's a bit like a, a bit like the guy. At, um, there was a guy at Wakefield, was it Wakefield or Bradford? The other year, who was a bit like, well, we'll buy it if if you yeah. if you don't give us the minus twelve or you don't give us this. Uh, there's a there's a there's a couple of meetings in the coming up where they're going to discuss sanctions. I think if Toronto do remain, they've got to have a points deduction. Um, How many? I think because because they already face an uphill battle, won't they? I know, but then at the same time, that's not anybody else's fault. Do you know what I mean? I think they should get the central funding. I think that you know, I think that you know, ultimately they need to remove any variation from funding. I think all twelve teams, because you know, you get to this point where you've got eleven teams voting, and there'll be at least four or five of them teams who are thinking, well, if we vote to kick Toronto out, we'll be a couple hundred grand or a couple of whatever it is, a couple hundred grand better off next season. Mm. And you know, for them being selfish and looking after their club, they're going to vote. You know, they're going to vote for that. Um, so I think if you if you just put them on an equal footing in terms of funding, you you know you, you move away any of that sort of you know any of that bias towards who, who whatever and, you know they they have to apply by the same quota rules yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So why not the funding? Um, I think they have to have a point of deduction. I don't know what it would be. Um, you know I think it wouldn't you wouldn't want it to be loads, but I think there needs to be. A, you know, are bringing the game into disrepute and not fulfilling for fixtures. You know, the need, you know, COVID or not, there needs to be. You know, maybe if it's only four points or six points, you know, not too much that it doesn't pull them out of playoff mm. contention, which I don't think it would. But I mean, could you imagine some of the clubs are going to be a bit miffed if Toronto? I mean, not that this would happen, but imagine if Toronto just want the league next season with no punishment for this yeah. season. You know, do halfway through next season, do wait for say actually. You know, we're miles adrift now, we're just going to bin the rest of the season to, to save a few costs. So, um, it'd be interesting how it goes, of course, none of us know what's going to happen because ultimately it'll be the Super League clubs that decide. Although Webster says Toronto should not be led back after the way they've carried on. They should, i tell you one thing that shouldn't happen, and, and to be fair, I did, I did like that this was what the owner said, that it was Super League or bus. Yeah. I think he got, there's, if they're not yeah. in Super League, they can't go anywhere else. Um, you know, I think I think that's the main the main yeah. takeaway from it. Um, I don't see Super League running well. I mean, I mean, so if they don't put Toronto in, you know, what do you think they'll do then? Will they, I, I, did they run with eleven? I just don't see them running with eleven. No. You couldn't have a magic weekend. No. Uh, well, I mean, you could, but it'd have to be a cup. A cup. I, 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 I think they want to get the second chance. I really do. Is that what you think? Yeah. Um, I mean, I because, because Super League will magic weekend, don't they? It's it's so big. Well, yeah, but I mean, if, 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 if it was about Magic Weekend, they could invite someone else in, couldn't they? Do you know what I mean? If it was that, it's probably to invite someone else in. For me, the only contender really, if if Toronto don't make it, would be Toulouse. I think it'd have to be Toulouse. I think if you're gonna if you were gonna parachute someone in, put Toulouse in like what they did with Catalan, yeah. you know, fifteen years ago. Um, you know, do I see them doing that? Probably not, but. That to me would be, you know, mm -hmm. that that's the that's the plan. That's the if it was up to me, option one is keep Toronto in. Option two is bring Toulouse in. That's option three. Get Carcass in. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. I don't think they don't think they've got the infrastructure for that. Um, but maybe one day you never know. Um, European Super League. Because the, the other thing we were talking about, we were talking about is obviously Toronto losing players, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because they were tight on cap space, so obviously Brad Singleton, who we talked about, has gone. Callum Watkins, who they signed after the season, anyway, he's gone. Um, a lot of the other players. Obviously, are obviously seen. there was meant to be signed Ben Flower, they meant to be signing mm -hmm. Richie Milo, mm -hmm. who's obviously just signed a new deal at Leeds. I think there was meant to be signing Stevie Ward as well for next year. Um, Not many of the current ones have left, though, have they? But then party wonders whether. Are they doing that because obviously once they leave, they're, left, they're going to fall down the list of mm. getting paid. Obviously, Gareth O'Brien's on loan at Cavs. Yeah, well, I think a lot, of, a lot of players have signed, oh, Charlie Taylor said, bring in York. Um, a lot of 
The Toronto plays have left, but a lot of it, they so Yeah, O'Brien, the telly. Well, Sonny Mill. Mill. Um, I think Link has left permanently, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we just had a quick look at the video. Josh McGraw's gone back to Australia, played in Australia, but obviously he's, he's said that he'll, he's, he's going to come well. back over here for 2021. If, if there's only like three or four who've maybe left permanently, like, say, Kay, Worthington, um, Singleton, Watkins, who perhaps wasn't even there anyway. Um, so it, I mean that probably helps them in some ways because obviously they needed to create the, the salary cap space um, but it's certainly going to be an interesting an interesting couple of weeks um, thanks everyone for your comments and for joining in, I've got to get on the M62 because apparently there's been an accident um, please do like and share the video, we'll be back Thursday 12.30 next week thanks as always to Betfred for their sponsorship and please do keep it on lovelybelieve.com for all the latest. See you next time.